Out of all the moves in jujitsu, this one is definitely the most fitting for the holiday season in more than one way. Because who doesn't want more than anything to gift wrap and choke people during the holidays? Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal, forehead kiss. We are gonna go over the three steps to do this move. And for those of you who are into Jiu Jitsu and want to know how to do this to people that are also technical and bigger and stronger than you, like let's say you're a smaller person and you're like, hey, how do I get this to work on a big, strong, like year one white belt? Go over to my Patreon because I'm gonna be giving you the technical tips on how I get it to work on people stronger than me. And please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We are a fully functional family of people who enjoy choking one another. Today's present is going to be Gary. Um, Gary is definitely a gift to all of us. And the first step is to secure the present. So which means in this case, uh, maintaining a dominant position. And that means being on top and staying on top. That means your side control, your mount, and all the variations of mount and side control. Maintaining a dominant position is difficult, especially when somebody is physically fighting you. During rolling and grappling, that's when you and your training partners go to town. That is the pressure cooker, the testing site on figuring out if your game works. While grappling or during a roll, uh, typically your opponent is going to try to bridge out. They're gonna try to buck and hip out. Uh, when they have explosive athleticism with a will fueled by unbroken ego, it will feel like you're riding a bull. Um, and as with taming any wild stallion, the goal is to systematically break their will. Sometimes if you're trying to get something to work in jujitsu, the answer is more force. And for those other times, the answer is letting go and going with the flow. So this means reading their movements and reacting in accordance with their movements. So the right move is the right move at the the right time. You have to know when the timing is right to employ a move. Step number two. Once you establish your physical dominance, now it's time to make things fun. So what I like to do is I like to lean in and whisper sweet nothings into Gary's ear before proceeding with the gift wrapping. Now, in order to make them suffer, here's what you do. First, we set up the gift wrap with an Americana and the Americana serves to dislocate the shoulder joint. So think of like you have a little small bird that's been cooked and you're taking the wing and basically ripping it off. That's like, you know, you can Americana a small hen, like one of those little Cornish hens. Yeah, just kind of like, that, that's what we're doing here. In a self-defense situation, like adrenaline is a motherfucker, <laughs> okay? Adrenaline is a hell of a drug. During my MMA fights, you don't feel a thing. My opponent broke her arm over my head during our MMA fight. Broke it on a radius break. And she still fought a round and a half. And that is what adrenaline does. You don't feel any pain when you have adrenaline coursing through you. That's why it's important for self-defense situations to not completely rely on breaking somebody's bone or dislocating a joint. So we start with the Americana as like the appetizer. 
we dislocate a joint and then when they turn over on their side either you know like oh my god my arm or if they're skilled um, they will turn on their side they may turn on their side in order to escape and or to defend now when they do that this is your chance because in jujitsu you know, yeah, you can force things to happen, but the reason why it's called the gentle art is you want them to make the decision to move in a certain way, and you can be persuasive. In this case, the persuasion is dislocating a shoulder or threatening to. So when they turn on their side, now is your, this is the timing, this is when you picture this in your mind. You're in mount, they roll on their side, now you have your opportunity to gift wrap. So you transition to a technical mount, get your knee high up, and then now this is the beautiful part. This is the gift wrapping portion. You use their own arm and wrap it around their neck and this secures them. Now if you're into MMA, uh, this position is also the perfect time to soften them up with some strikes. That way they can be, you know, like you want to kind of chip away at their will. And once their will is chipped, sometimes you can get them to the point of like, they're like, oh, please God, just choke me now and get it over with. Like, that's what we want. <laughs> In a self-defense situation, I would just go straight for the choke and you're probably figuring like, why? Why wouldn't you strike Crystal? Well, if I were to punch Gary in the face in this moment in time, if we were in an MMA cage and I had gloves on, great, let's soften him up. I don't risk getting injured injuries to my hands because of the gloves. But if this were a stone cold self-defense situation, if I punch Gary in the face right now in this position, I risk missing and hitting possibly a hard floor pavement, breaking my hand. Um, if I do punch him in the face, I could break my hand on his face. His head is very hard. My opponent broke her arm over my head. I am also hard headed. Now, and, and the striking, what is that serving to do? Your end goal is to knock somebody out. How can you knock somebody out? You choke them unconscious. It's the same principle. So I could punch his face, right? But what is that really doing? Am I really gonna get the knockout there? No, in a self-defense situation, I would just go right to the back and right to the choke. And also, when you do strike people, it leaves marks. The beauty of a choke is you knock them out with the choke, they're unconscious, and there's no marks. So there's no you know, evidence, you're not having to fill out a bunch of paperwork afterwards. Step number three, I fall to my side in the same back attack position as my previous video. I'll link that video below where I go over this position in depth. With all chokes in jiu-jitsu, your goal is to block the carotid artery and to suppress that. And we do that in this instance with a rear naked choke where you're using your forearm and your bicep to block those arteries. So you're blocking the blood flow to the brain. And this is the same physics, essentially, as getting knocked out with a strike. Except with a strike, you have a rapid change in blood pressure, which causes the suppression of blood. But with a choke, you have a more of a chance of getting a choke than knocking somebody out. And with a choke, the beauty of it is over, let's say, an armbar for a self-defense situation is they will go out. They will become unconscious. And you have a 100% chance of getting away when somebody is unconscious. If you just, let's say, do the Americana and dislocate their shoulder, 
then they may still have enough adrenaline to then chase you down and you're like, oh my God, this is weird. Their arms flapping everywhere. Like now just, just go for the choke or at least know how to trans. This is why this gift wrap is so great because it, it, it allows you the transition to the back just in case more effort is needed. Now with a choke, if you hold it past the point of a knockout, of them passing out, the brain is not getting blood flow. Um, and you can literally murder your training partner um, if you don't let go. And during training, we all tap before we pass out because if we continuously have blood flow restriction to our brain, it will probably compromise our brain functionality. So everybody just taps before we even get to the point of passing out. You know this because your vision starts to narrow. You can still breathe through this whole thing. Your vision starts to narrow and you know you're going out. Now, if you murder all of your training partners, you know, you're not gonna have anybody to train with and your coach is probably gonna be a little bit angry at the decrease in, you know, income. So I don't, I don't suggest, I don't suggest that. So definitely pay attention. This doesn't happen very often. Everybody taps before this point, but it's happened to me. They passed out because they didn't want to tap. And yeah, you're going to hear labored breathing. It's going to be weird. Just make sure you keep eye contact with them. <laughs> so, you know, um, and in a self-defense situation, um, when somebody passes out from getting uh, like a rear naked choke or getting any type of jujitsu choke, you basically have five to 10 seconds before they wake up and another like five seconds before they actually understand what's going on and come to. Um, so I recommend stashing zip ties all around your house. That way you can just hog tie them and call the police. Amazon link below to good zip ties. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful, if you're technical in jujitsu, go check out my Patreon. I will upload a video on there to talk about the technical aspects because as a smaller person in jujitsu, if I can get it to work against stronger, experienced white belts, then if you're the biggest, strongest on the mat, you don't have to be as technical as the smallest person on the mat. That's why I really like small person jujitsu. If a small person can do it against bigger people, you know that they know how to do it right. All right. So thank you so much for watching and definitely comment down below. Like, what was your favorite part? Like, are you in jujitsu? Like, what's, what's good? <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye. And please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We are a fully functional family of people who enjoy choking one another.